you guys are back. So just to give you a, a friendly reminder and a heads up if you haven't seen my previous videos, um, this lawn in particular, we were having a real big problem with ryegrass and fescue that was taking over. And because the rhizomes are so far apart, what was happening is the, as they would mow, the dead grass would sit on top of the soil. So they thought they were mulching when in all essence, they were just leaving a bunch of dead grass and it was choking out the beneficiary grasses that they wanted to have. So last fall, we beat this thing up pretty good with a power rake and let me show you. So last fall, I took a power rake to the lawn and we thinned this thing out. And I, I hit it pretty hard. And if you look closely, you can kind of see a lot of this uh, grass, it's um, thinned out quite a bit, just about where I want it. And now what I'm gonna do is hit it with a uh, an overseeder. We're gonna put down a pure Kentucky bluegrass. Now, uh, bluegrass is extremely rhizomatous, which just means that the tail clippings that come out of the root bases or by the root bases are really tightly woven. And what that's gonna do it's going to help us get the look that she wants, the feel that she wants. It's going to come in real nice and thick. Um, there are some downsides to using bluegrass. It's water hungry. Uh, the roots kind of max out about 8 to 10 inches with the bluegrass, where with uh, a fine, tall fescue, you can get those roots to go down almost 20 inches. Um, I just went over to the rental shop and I got this Billy Goat machine, and this thing is a beast. Um, one thing about this machine is it's got controllers everywhere. So it's got a lever for forward, a lever for reverse. This opens the hopper. Uh, this is your transmission gear down here. Um, this lever is for travel mode versus putting the um, little thatch blades down. I'm going to go ahead and get this off of the, uh, the trailer and then we'll take a better look. Okay guys, so to do this job right, I got myself a 50 pound bag of seed. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, this overseed machine, um, it's got a lot of little doodads on it. So you've got your seed flow rate on the front. Um, luckily they were smart enough to give us a really nice label for the seed application chart. Now I'm gonna be using a bluegrass and since we're gonna cross hatch it, the one mistake that could easily be made is I wanna end up at four pounds. So I'm gonna run it at two pounds and we're gonna go one direction uh, and then we're gonna cross hatch it the other direction. And so I'm gonna to need to be my, my stop setting somewhere around a two to a two and a half. Um, and if you go too fast and this thing goes all the way up to 10 and it's got a little shoot in here, let me get my shadow out of the way so you guys can see. Um, but as you can see, this is gonna be spinning and then underneath here, that's gonna be opening uh, as soon as I pull the, the lever right here. That shoot kinda opens all the way up as you can see, opens and closes. So pretty simple device, but if you're not paying attention, you could run into problems. The problem that you're gonna be facing on this is it weighs so much. It's not like an aerator that only weighs 150 pounds that you can just kinda, kinda muscle through it. You have to let this machine do its work. Now, the other setting that's really important is this is the uh, depth setting. I only wanna be at 1 8 inch, and so I put it all the way down. I'm gonna run a couple of test passes first to make sure that I'm calibrated properly. So I wanted to give you a quick idea of what this machine looks like underneath. So I propped it up for you. And as you can see, it looks very similar to a power rake. It's just got these little sheaths of metal and that is going to uh, dig into the ground almost like a tiller. And then it is going to drop seeds out of these holes right here. So the grass seed I chose is by uh, Barenbrug. It's kind of a funky name. Uh, we did a couple of tests on this grass seed and we're really happy with the germination rate. 
Uh, we took a couple of pots, threw some grass seed on top, put a quarter of an inch of topsoil on top of it, and we didn't use any special seed mix. We just took whatever was in the backyard, and we found uh, this bluegrass germinated uh, within about two weeks. It says on the label five, but we had really good luck with it, so I'm gonna give it a try. So if you guys are curious what's in it, it's 100% bluegrass. And the thing I like about this product is this is uh, sod rated. So if you look at the weed seed per pound, there is none found. And that is a big deal because the stuff that you typically get at the hardware store, they're gonna have up to you know anywhere between five and 20% weed seed or annual grasses. So it's really important to make sure that you get the machine calibrated properly before you put the seed down. Uh, this will help a lot of costly mistakes. Uh, the biggest one is you can put the seed down at too high of a rate or you can put it too deep. So we're going to go ahead and calibrate this machine pretty easily by just running it first, making sure that the depth is set properly and making sure that the chute is actually opening properly as well. So we want to double check the chute because if the chute is opening too far, you're gonna spend a lot of money in grass seed in one pass, and that's not what we want. We want an even distribution across the lawn. So part of our calibration that's really important is to make sure that we're putting it down at the proper rate. So I've got my grass seed here. I'm not gonna put the whole bag in the hopper because I wanna make sure I'm not just dumping seed out. Now I wanna do about four pounds per thousand square feet. Um, now we know a pound of this grass seed is about five and a half cups. So I'm going to be adding in some more around 20 to 22 cups of grass seed. I'm gonna do this test pass to make sure that it's working properly. So I'm really glad that I ended up doing the calibration because it was kind of funny and I'll, I'll show you something. It, uh, the machine told me I was supposed to be at a level two. And after I got done, check it out, I ended up being at a level four and a half to end up getting uh, the pounds per thousand square feet that I wanted. And it was a little tricky to figure out. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera around and kind of show you what I did. Okay, so I measured out a thousand square feet and then I ended up spreading and I noticed that the seeds in the hopper really weren't going down as fast as I was kind of expecting. So I ended up speeding it up and you can see there's a grass seed here and there's a couple here. So at least I knew they were going down. And so by that knowledge, I was able to figure out I just needed to open the chute a little bit more, but I was a little concerned at first. It wasn't actually working. But now that I got it calibrated, the, the rest of the lawn should go pretty quick. So a couple of lessons I learned you gotta keep the machine moving. I also learned that if you don't calibrate it, you really don't know what you're gonna be putting down. So make sure you do the calibration correctly. Um, I also learned that this isn't very profitable. Like <laughs> I probably wouldn't do this all the time. I do it definitely to my own lawn, uh, but I would reconsider and let the homeowner do these types of services. It's time to put the machine away guys. Uh, I had a fun time doing this video. Don't forget to hit the like button uh, if you did like what I have to say and hopefully I'll save you some time. It's important to remember that the reason why we use an overseeder is to save you money. It's not necessarily the time savings. You're going to get a better germination rate because the seed is in the ground. If you guys have any questions or concerns, hit me up in the comment and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until the next time guys, have a good one. Bye.